Welcome back, everybody. What an opening game in Minnesota. Heartbreak again, and a loss that didn't feel very different from recent years' losses. But there were truly some positives that you could take away. We're going to break down what cost the Huskers this game and the silver linings that we both truly saw. First, though, thank you guys for showing up to our first full game live stream. It was way more successful than we thought it would be, and we're going to do it again against Colorado. It was really fun interacting with a lot of you in the chat, and we've even had some Minnesota fans come in that made the conversation really interesting. And they were really chill and classy. But hit that like for us and tell us below in the comments, what do you think the biggest reason for the Huskers loss versus the Golden Gophers was? Gary, are we both in agreement that this loss comes down to Jeff Sims' terrible decision making with the ball? Or was there more that you think needs to be blamed? Two things can be true at once, you know. To have four total turnovers, obviously three of them being Sims interceptions, two of them very critical. To have that and for them to need a, a really solid drive at the end and a, and a game-winning field goal, you can look at other things. You can look at as well as the defense played, not being able to get off field on third and some longs a couple different times, changing things. Um, you can look at the penalties, discrepancy, uh, especially at the end of the first half. You wouldn't have even been in a situation for him to throw that interception if it's not for the the, the fall start but things like that are going to happen in games you know it's 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 like finding a unicorn when you're if you're going to have a team that has one or two or fewer penalties you're going to have to overcome those types of things you're going to have to deal with teams converting third down sometimes some of them are going to be long so i think if you play a damn near perfect game in every other aspect then you're kind of concerned kind of you are concerned with jeff sims turnover issues and that's not new that's not like a thing that just popped up this first game that's something that was a concern when we heard he was coming from Georgia Tech but since the rest of the game wasn't played perfect and I don't think anyone realistically is anticipating us getting to a stage where we're playing perfect games turnovers are going to be the the make or break for us I think throughout the season but especially situational like that you know I mean that that first half turnover into the first half turnover that literally took three points off the board you know and like you and I were talking about during the live stream and you were talking about a field goal and I'm like you find a route or two that you like that you that you think your sure-handed guys your short down possession guys can make and either it's there and, and you take a shot at it or you throw it out of the back of the end zone and you you still end up with the the field goal and he tries to overthrows a you know not overthrows purposely throws over maybe he didn't see him a wide open workature and tries to fit it in a window and like he did on many many throws he's staring down the receiver I didn't even worry about Borkutcher. He's watching his eyes and drops back and sits on the pass and picks it off. So, and then obviously Anthony Grant's catching a lot of heat and rightfully so turning the ball over the way he did all of that stuff that led up, you know, to him being third on the depth chart and things like that. We still got the ball back after that. The defense did a really good job in critical moments. The offense just didn't. And then, you know, trying to trying to squeeze that pass in on that crossing route was all but the nail in the coffin. So long-winded way of answering your question. No, I don't think we can overcome games if he's going to have three turns turnovers or even two critical turnovers but as well as we were set up at the end of the game with all of that happening you could definitely correct some other things and still win that game so i mean not to jump ahead but like where you at the beginning talked about the silver lining to me that's kind of it you know in previous years if we had that many more penalty yards that many more turnovers that fewer snaps than the opposing team it's not even that close you know it doesn't maybe the score is because of some garbage stuff at the end but that feel that the game's right there to be had doesn't really exist in previous years with those same scenarios definitely not happy about the anthony grant fumble i feel like he's been demoted to third string in name only kind of like a slap on the wrist when in reality i suspect that rule wants him in the game more getting more carries because he is better than gabe irvin even though gabe irvin is a stud Anthony Grant is special special and he's just demoting him because of his issues in camp with fumbling. I wasn't happy that Gabe Irvin wasn't featured as the bell cow we were promised that he would be. I think he would have done nicely and you're the coach, you're the one telling us that he's having fumble issues, then why is he the one running the ball in the crucial time of the game and not your number one guy Gabe Irvin? But to get specific with the interceptions, the first one, to be fair, Sims was getting mauled by three guys and he tried to make a play and couldn't. I can accept that interception. The second one, 
one was egregious. Borkacher was sitting down, wide open, right inside the goal line. Right in front of him, right in his line of vision. Like right, in, right there if you're throwing. That, that was just gross. The third interception cost us the game. He throws off of his back leg. You had made a great point to me. If he pump fakes and waits for the receiver to get one passing lane further, he could be gone. I just was not expecting this from Jeff Sims. I was a fool. I got fooled by the spring game. I thought, damn, this dude looks accurate. And I lied to myself and said the problems that he was having at Georgia Tech, he won't have them here. And I feel stupid for that. But then there are silver linings like the special teams. Ramir Johnson almost housed a kick. When's the last time we had a successful kick return like that? Our kicker, though a true freshman, looked good. Didn't get rattled. Made a nice field goal. Made an extra point. Can't ask for more from a young guy like that. The tackling was fantastic. The defense, the black shirts played like black shirts. 13 points. I could rock with that every game. They didn't look overmatched at all. They looked like they belonged in the Big Ten. And there is an argument to be made that the Huskers really won that game. And I know that that's a embarrassing thing to, to even say. Like, oh, we really won. But if we're going to mathematically look at this honestly, they took away seven points for the Huskers. Point blank. Now, the Huskers got some decent calls go in their favor. Don't get me wrong. But this was an actual scoring play that God and everyone could see that Gabe Irvin crossed the goal line before his elbow hit. And they just said, nah, it'll be fine. Taking that score away, and I'm not going to spend too much time on that because I think officiating across the board anymore in sports is horrible. But it's also, we have the benefit of replays and things like that but it wasn't just that it took away the touchdown it made the following play legit which made penalty stick which backs backs them up to where they're needing to throw down they're not right on the goal line probably stacking grant and a, a fullback behind sims and help pushing him over the line but you talk about the defense and that's for game one i think about as good as you could expect from a defense that a lot of people were down on the 335 a lot of people thought that with like garrett nelson and oshan mathis and different guys from last year being gone Mar marquis buford still being hurt um farmer leaving the team a, a lot of changes on the defensive side of the ball from a defense that really wasn't that good last year until towards the end of the season and even then it was it was better than how bad it was at the beginning but it wasn't like raising anybody's eyebrows i thought I agree with you i thought it looked really good for sure things they can improve on i felt like it took them a while to get things figured out how to get pressure on the quarterback i felt like it took them a, too long in the first half to stop giving such a cushion on the receivers and the, on the back end and letting everything underneath and in the flats be open. The third downs, you know, I kind of alluded to earlier on. Th those are going to happen sometimes, but I felt like it was just too frequent. You know, the, the time of possession, I think they had the ball maybe a minute more than us, but they had, what, 15, 20 more plays. And a lot of that was because of that, because they were able to convert some of those third downs that you would think favors the defense in third and eights and sevens and nines and things like that. So, yes, the tackling for sure was a breath of fresh air. I'd be shocked if there's more than a hand Handful, two handfuls of missed tackles and it's not just that it's guys swarming to the ball it's gang tackling it's a lot of things that have just been missing for a long time from our defense and the running game back to your point with like wish we would have seen more Irvin Irvin outrushed Grant even though it felt like he never hardly touched the ball he had like I think seven carries to Grant's nine he had 20 something 30 yards more than him carrying the ball so I understand in situational perspective going okay Grant has a little more shake to him but still has that kind of downhill hard running that Irvin has. If your offensive line can't create holes for you or put the holes where they're supposed to be, you need a guy that can do that. Obviously, Ramir can do that. I think Emmett Johnson has shown on, at least on tape, signs that he could do that, but they're not the physical runners that Irvin and Grant are. So it makes sense. The best of both worlds, I feel like, and a lot of people could disagree with me and it's not a sword I'm dying on. It's just from what I've seen, I think Grant is the more versatile back with the best of both worlds of all the backs we have i think irvin is more of like an nfl or like a pro style guy where he's he's maybe a cut and go or you give him a little bit of a gap or a little bit of a crease and he and he's gonna go he's not going down by arm tackles he's not dancing around a lot but again when your offensive line is not giving you the lanes or the gaps that a guy that is trying to go from zero to 100 and uses momentum and size to go through lanes and those lanes aren't there you're kind of handcuffing him you look at the stat line it looks like he did all right with the seven carries he got but anyway a long-winded way of saying I understand the mindset of a coach
coach saying, okay, we're going to go with Grant. To you and everybody else's point, I also fully understand why in the hell did you take a guy who was your premier back last year for the most part, demote him to three because of fumbles and in the critical points of the game, that's the guy you run with. I get both of those things. Obviously nothing you can do about it now. And like, I don't, that's bad and that can't happen, but we still got the ball back. Our defense still did its job, got us the ball back without allowing points and somebody else turns the ball over. So I agree and I do think that a lot of things look good, you know, especially for a game one, a lot of things you can build off, of, a lot of positives, a lot of improvements from last year, but this team clearly has a turnover problem. Jeff Sims concerns from Georgia Tech of not being good protecting the ball, not not being very accurate came with him it wasn't just a coach in a surrounding talent situation and i think the penalties are probably the first thing we're going to see kind of start to get cleaned up i think that'll happen before sims isn't throwing picks and you know some of the other mishaps the offensive line things like that are getting fixed but you got kind of two different things here you've got all the downside of the offense but you've got a lot of upside in the off i'm sorry in the defense that to take away from this game and definitely plenty on both sides of the ball i think they'll be able to work on and listen to rule after the game Game, it sounds like you know that that's where he's gearing all the focus towards not what can we get better at and how can we be better when when we roll into colorado not this should have happened we go again none of that stuff and I, I definitely like to see that well i guess the other bit of silver lining is the fact that if we can win next week against Colorado, I think all of this bad taste can be washed out of our mouth. Tell us what you guys think in the comments. Thanks for hanging out. We'll see you guys for the next game live stream versus Colorado. That's going to be an early one. Till then, go Big Red.